I don't know uh, if you can read it or not, but uh, over there on the clock, right there, it says minus 24.3 degrees Celsius. Yeah, cold morning. I'm sure glad I wasn't like that yesterday when I had to go out and work with the snowblower. Uh, now mind you, the, the snowblower has heated hand grips, uh, but well, it kind of kind of helps, and they actually get quite hot. Uh, yeah, they get quite hot. I was surprised, uh, but unfortunately, generally your the ends of your fingers aren't touching them. Uh, anyway, enough about the snowblower. Let's talk about the sunrise. It looks like we're going to have a sunrise this morning. Yeah, when it's clear. When, like when it's very cold here in Winnipeg, generally it's clear. That's generally the way it goes. Uh, when it when we when we see that warm weather is is coming in, well, generally that means that we're also going to get either rain in the summer or snow in the winter. So, uh, yeah. Now, what's happening here? All right. Uh, I'm just checking to see how my connection, when I, I glued this easy line back together. And in the rollback, if you watch it, it's only about four or five minutes long. I do come to the model table yesterday, just for a little while. Now, you know, I was, I was having a problem. Uh, in fact, I, I still am having a problem. My new camera, uh, it puts out a lot more data and my computer system can't cope with it. And and uh, yesterday I was wondering, well, what am I going to do? You know, like uh, I was thinking of upgrading my computer anyway. But but still, I was thinking, what am I going to do for the for right now? I want to be able to use it at 60 frames a second. Uh, otherwise, I may as well have just just used my other camera. So uh, I. My laptop is also right, right there in the uh, what I call the computer room, and uh, I, I thought, well, uh, could it could it be that the uh, video card in, in the laptop is is maybe a little different uh, than the video card that's in the uh, uh, main computer? And uh, so I thought, well, I'll try it. So last night I I, I worked at it till twelve thirty. <laughs> till midnight and uh, yeah I, I found out that the laptop will will uh, process the video files that are coming out of the new camera like like right now you're watching the Z9 you're looking through the Z9 I don't know if you're going to notice any difference you should notice a bit of difference when I when I move it should be um, it should be smoother we're going to do a test on that we're going to do a side-by-side -side test with the two cameras I'm going to uh, I'm going to wait until my uh, uh, my lens comes, the uh, the other lens that I want to get for the Z9. Uh, it's not here yet, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. Uh, yeah, uh, what was I going to say here? I'm going to do a side-by-side -side test to just, just for motion. That's not for sharpness or anything like that. It's just that uh, how, how well can we see detail in motion and uh, the faster the frame rate, the smoother it'll be, and the and the better you're going to be able to see the detail. Anyway, uh, enough about that. Let's uh, let's let's roll back and see uh, how I got to this point, and uh, uh, then we'll uh, come back and uh, work on this. Uh, uh, what, what do you think? This, uh, right now, the uh, uh, I'm pinpoint focused right here there's a little light and I zoomed in on it and I focused in right there and then I stopped the camera down to f f16 instead of 22 so that means that stuff that's that's close to you is is going to be a little bit fuzzy and and possibly stuff that's further away might be a little bit fuzzy but but right here should be nice and sharp um, yeah, in, in in the comments below, let me know how how does it look on your monitor. It, mind you, it, it, 
you know, if it looks sharp to me, it should look sharp to you as well. Okay, let's uh, let's get going here, and let's let's try not to talk about the Z9 all day. I mean, we did enough of that. Okay, let's see if we can do something here. Now I imagine that the best thing to do is to just cut this off. Now that reminds me, I've got at least three comments from people saying use nail clippers. Now I do have nail clippers here, somewhere. So let me push the stop button for a moment while I look, while I look for them. Okay, they were in the medicine cabinet. Now. These, these nail clippers are going to have to be perfectly sharp all the way across or at least they're going to have to come together where this easy line is. Otherwise the easy line is going to just sort of squash out and, and uh, it'll go in, the, go in the cracks of the where, where the uh, cutter is meeting together and there's, there's a little gap there. Um, Okay, I think that should be good. Let's let's give let's give this a try here. Okay, now you're not going to believe this, but what I just said kind of happened. Well, there it did finally go. But I was I was starting to squeeze pretty hard. Um, yeah, this this easy line is is uh, is strange stuff. It, you know, you when you look at it under the microscope, you realize it's made up of several d different strands, several strands uh, of rubber. It's not it's not one single strand like you're seeing right here. Now I'm just realizing that maybe what I should have done is left that long so that I would, you know, have something to grab hold of here. I was thinking in terms of. Uh, it might be easier this way, but I'm I'm seeing now that it it it, it isn't. It, it would actually be easier to uh, uh, have had it long, and I could have run it up and drawn it tight, and then nipped it off afterwards. Um, that was kind of stupid on my part, wasn't it? Oh well, makes uh, everything interesting here. Okay, I don't know if there's any. If this is liquidy enough to get on the end there or not. No, it's not. Nope. Maybe what I should have done is put curing agent on one and CA on the other and then when they meet, whoops. Talk about stubborn. My goodness, Ron. Talk about stubborn. This is probably dried out. I think I got uh, too much stretch on it. Yeah, give it a little bit of slack. There we go. Oh sure, now it's going to glue itself to the side of the hull. I can't win.
Okay, we are back to this morning. Now, I, th I think it was right there we glued it up. <laughs> Alright, so what I want to do is kind of just hook this around something that is... Well, I suppose we could use that davit actually, and that way we'd have the angle just right when, when everything let go. Now, just very, very gently there, try and loop it over the davit. And now, well, I, can I pull it tight somehow without it falling, falling down? Now, mind you, if it, if it went over the back, that, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be serious. We just wanna, we just wanna make that that little V-shaped bracket that we've got on the bottom there at the right angle, and then we will probably be able to nip off the. Yeah, let's just uh, let's just. Uh, what am I gonna? Maybe I could pinch a little bit of blue tack on there to add just the right amount of weight. Where's my blue tack? Okay. Okay. Sorry about my big ugly fingers here. Okay, maybe that's not enough weight. Not broke off. Well, we're going to have to think of something else here. Maybe what I'm going to have to do is, is just is just hold it with the tweezers at approximately the right angle, which is right there, and then try and very carefully put just a very minute amount of uh, of glue. I don't want it pulling too tight. Okay, we're going to put the macro lens on here. And you may recall me saying that there was a shield that I was surprised. It was like a shutter. It looked like a shutter, but it was sort of a guard to, to protect the sensor. And you may, re may recall me having said I was surprised that when I took the lens off or the cover off for the first time, it wasn't, it wasn't there. Now, I have since gone into the camera settings and I have uh, figured out how to, how to do it so that every time I turn the the uh, the camera off this this guard goes over the sensor I'm going to show it to you here and that way because I'm changing lenses here constantly at the model table and so on um, well let, let's just do it here okay you can see it there you you can't see the you can't see the sensor anymore Okay, this, our macro lens has the uh, the. Uh, well, I'll put it down here in front of this this one. You can see it's got the adapter on it now. Okay, good old macro lens. Okay, I have re-glued our easy line back together here and I'm really finding that uh, gluing easy line to plastic seems to work really well but if you try to glue easy line to easy line it doesn't want to hold so I'm just sort of holding my breath here now I want to pull this a little bit tighter So that that V is a little bit more in the right place. Okay, now I, I think that if we were to put a little bit of CA right there, just just a tiny little bit, it might it might hold. 
It might it might end up looking like sort of a little clevis at a distance. My uh, CA glue seems to be uh, gelling or something there. Okay, let's let's just leave that for a while now. I'm guessing about 45 minutes is past here, and uh, I don't want to use the uh, nail clippers on this because I I know that this is this will actually work. The, these scissors. Now I got to separate these here. I don't want to accidentally nip the wrong one. Okay, so it, it appears that. Okay, this this one here with the and if I pull it like this, okay, yeah, that's that's the one. This one right here is the one that uh, we want to nip off. So let's try and get as close as we can to the. cast. I, th I think that, that uh, well, there's, there's a little, ooh, that was close. I almost nipped off the, the, the uh, bee thing. How do I can get just a little closer now here? There we go. There, I'm not going to mess with it anymore. Yep, that looks believable. I wonder if I should try and maybe paint that black or something, or should I just leave it clear? Kind of, I don't know. When I when I when I leaned back and looked at it at a bit of a distance, it it kind of. Uh, I think maybe I'll just touch it with some black paint. Okay, I've got uh, the uh, NATO black number uh, 69 here, and uh, I think I'll do it now because the camera's all set up and everything. Now this is a flat, a flat paint, so so when it's when it dries, it's going to do two things. It's going to go flat, so you don't see the glint and it's going to shrink a little bit so I think it's going to be okay I'd, I know I, I got the paint it looks like part way down on the other side there so we may as well do this one too now mind you the the easy line is black already so okay quit fussing well it has turned out to be a nice bright sunny day but it's still pretty cold, minus 19.4 as I speak. Uh, so it didn't warm up a whole lot. It looks nice, but it's not warm. I'm not going out if I don't have to. Problem is, I do have to. I got a shovel on my sidewalk here. Neighbor's coming over for coffee in about uh, an hour and a half or so. And I don't want him to uh, get uh, snow in his slippers. <laughs> okay. I think that's going to be it for uh, today. Uh, I'm going to cut it off. I have to use my laptop to uh, try and upload to YouTube today. So uh, we'll just see how it goes. Um, yeah, if today's episode was, uh, was late, you'll know things did not go well. So far, it's going very slowly, but it, it is going. We are, uh, we are uh, being able to use the laptop to... Uh, render the uh, the uh, video that's coming out of the Z9 so uh, that's good news and uh, all of today's episode should be at uh, 60 frames per second so like wherever there's movement involved it should be just a little bit smoother 
at least uh, well, one of the viewers uh, sent me a comment and he said something about you should do a side-by-side -side test you know between the two cameras the the Z9 and the D850 and I had I had already thought of doing that in fact a month ago already I printed out a sort of you might call it a test sheet it's just a circle with a bunch of lines on it and the idea is I'm going to have both cameras looking at the same thing and uh, then simultaneously have a uh, uh, have them on the screen uh, so that everything's running at the same speed and then we should be able to see uh, the the D50 will be running at 30 frames a second and the Z9 will be running at 60 frames a second and we can do a, a pretty accurate comparison to see uh, you know uh, the, the difference and uh, I'll keep everything at 4k and try and be as fair as possible I mean I won't uh, I won't uh, uh, <laughs> deliberately have the one out of focus and the other nice and sharp to, to prove my point or anything like that. I'll do the, the very best I can. Now the, the Z9 will also will also video at 120 frames per second in, in, uh, uh, in uh, 4K. So uh, I, I don't know if I could do a comparison with that. That would be like uh, Half time slow motion, but if we want to have the if we want to have the uh, 850 at half slow motion, <clears throat> like half speed, I'd have to be running it at 15 frames a second. So uh, we're, we're, uh, that is, if you want to stay in 4K. Now we're getting a lot of techno techno babble or whatever you want to call it here. Let's uh, let's call it quits for today. I'll probably come back at this again this evening and. And we'll attach it uh, to the beginning of tomorrow's episode. So thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow.